mention very quickly in the beginning of this video that I had talked to a lot of uh, people over the past six months explaining to them that I had uh, some more things in the works and I finally have finished some of the products I'm coming out with and you know over the years I've found so many people with different dependencies looking for natural ways to get off of the dependencies and I decided to come up with a new product new, a couple new products for different types of dependencies and give a natural way to get off of those uh, to help so I created vitamin support.com LLC and there is some products on there right now there's gonna be some more coming in in the next probably month or so and vitamin support is not just going to be niche products it's also going to be a line of products where you can get all your vitamin needs and minerals all right may branch into amino acids too depending on how things go so just wanted to make that announcement I'm very excited about it worked my ass off to get this going and it is now a reality today I am also going to share a story I'm going to ask you guys to send in more questions for the Q&A. I have a good amount now, but I want to I want a bunch of questions. Um, and also on the Instagram account. I have an Instagram account called Vitamin Sport. On that Instagram account and on my personal Facebook page yesterday, I posted a before and after photo of myself. Uh, the before photo was from 2008. I was 240 pounds and the after photo was taken, I think on actual, I think it was Halloween or the day before Halloween um, of this year. And what I want from you guys is to send in your before and after photos. So if you want to be posted on the Instagram account, I would like you guys to send in your pictures because it's very motivating for other people to see that. Uh, Instagram is something that I just ventured into. I don't know much about it. And I'm not very good with the tags, but... Uh, I can see a lot of resources there for other people to find, you know, motivation to keep going, get inspiration to um, take over their life. Okay. So today's story is a mother talking about her daughter. And she says, my name is Debbie. I'm 52 years old. I've been a single parent to my only child, a daughter who is 19. She has a son who is two and a half years old. They are both my greatest joys in life. My daughter has always had her father in her life, even though we divorced when she was four. I've tried always to set good examples for her growing up. She was not raised around any sort of substance abuse or any kind of abuse. She's always been very headstrong and adventure seeking. She never liked being at home sitting still. When she was in her very early teens, she was diagnosed with emotional regulation disorder and oppositional defiance disorder those are two things i'm honestly going to say i've never heard of she's a smart girl but didn't apply herself as she should have in school she cared more about socializing she did graduate high school she had a baby just before she turned 17. her and my grandson have always lived with me her baby daddy which that term i hate and his family are very involved in my grandson's life. My daughter has a support system, but dot dot dot. This is where the story goes. A year ago, she met a 20 year old guy who seemed to be a really nice person. Seven months later, after a lot of drama and chaos with my daughter, him and myself, I found out that he uses heroin. At that time, I told at that time, I was told that my daughter had tried it by snorting it. Of course, I was completely freaked out. I knew my daughter did some drinking and smoked weed, but heroin? I started looking into the possibility that a person could just try it and not become addicted. I had hoped that maybe she was a lucky one who could. I wasn't in denial, but my daughter was not open to discussing it with me at all. Still isn't. So her boyfriend went to rehab this past June then to sober living for a month, then returned back to our town early August. My daughter had become very emotional, getting mad easily, lying all the time, blaming me for her anger, etc. 
I would ask her if she was on drugs and she would blow up, saying to me that she's so tired of me accusing her of that. So I stopped. I decided that until I knew for certain why I keep accusing her. It was hell. My gut told me she was using. When her boyfriend came back from rehab, his mother helped him get an apartment on September 13th. At that point, my daughter's behavior began to spiral faster. Not coming home to be with her son, seeing her acting so tired, nodding out. But still, what could I do? Since meeting her boyfriend, she lost two jobs, daycare, use of her vehicle, dropped out of college, bad checks, stealing, pawning, etc. Finally, on September 22nd, she was faced with the threat of her baby daddy being told about her behavior. That made her snap. She decided that she was going to go to rehab. She made the calls, arranged it herself, and flew to Georgia on September 24th for a 30-day stay in a rehab facility. Just this past Monday, October 24th, she flew out to California for aftercare at a sober living facility. I stumbled on your videos in my attempt to understand all of this. I began going to a support group two months ago to try to get an understanding of what my daughter may have been going through being an addict, not knowing she was one also. I'm proactive. I want to help her, but I do know she has to do this for herself. I'm having a hard time trying to understand my daughter, especially when it comes to her son. She won't talk to me about her addiction. She has talked to another family member, and I know that she's been using for a year, has been using needles. Supposedly, her boyfriend is now an ex. He himself is back in rehab. My daughter has said that she can't come back to our town because she has too many connections. She has a son here. Help me understand where is her head right now at this point of her recovery. I wonder if sober living is going to help. She's in Irvine, California, sharing an apartment with three other girls. Lots of group meetings and hanging out. Ugh. California. We live in Indiana. How will living in California and sober living transfer to living back in Indiana and dealing with her life? I'm so scared to lose my daughter. Thanks for any insight you can give, especially with a person so young as my daughter, just dealing with the maturity level of a 19-year-old versus an older adult with addiction would seem to me to create a different dynamic in regards to recovery. 100%. This is the thing too, you gotta keep in mind. They say, experts say that when you start using uh, a mind-altering substance every day, like heroin, um, your maturity level stops. So if someone starts using, say, heroin or prescription painkillers for, um, for four years when they're 18, and then at 22 they switch over to heroin, use heroin for 10 years. When they stop at 32, they have the mentality of a maturity level of an 18-year-old. That's what they say. Apparently it catches up very quickly when you're in recovery, and uh, you're a they're able to catch up with everybody else that's the same same age but at that point in the early stage of recovery they have a very low maturity level um, it is difficult to talk with someone at that age and when we were all at that age at one point uh, we thought we knew everything we thought we had uh, all the answers and there's always a sense of ego at that age at majority of people so getting through to her might not be possible at this time because of her age but I do believe she's doing the right thing right now yes she's away from her son the thing that is hard is that we want we, you want her to come home you want her to be with her son you want her to raise her son but what she's saying it sounds like she's not ready she's fragile and she may understand her recovery to the point where and, and I want to mention something real quick too before I forget this. The fact that she made the calls herself and that she worked on finding a place for her rehab is huge. Okay, That factors into success rates because far too often people have other people set everything up for them. They're not willing to put in the work to find help themselves. Their family, their friends, whatever will be calling the rehabs. And just the, the fact that she took the initiative at her age to, to call the places and find the places for her to go for help is big. So you should actually be really proud of that. Um, but the, the fact that she's saying that she's, she has too many connections at home, 
a lot of people who are watching this video will relate to that because she may not she may feel safe right now and she may be learning a lot about herself who she is as a person she may be learning a lot about recovery how she deals with stress how she deals with with issues and she may be scared to come home into the same town uh, have the responsibility of being a mother not having a job having a lot of time on her hands besides watching the kid so it's impossible for anyone to get in, into her head and say exactly what she's thinking, how she's feeling, what she's planning on doing, how she's going to transition to when she gets home. But at this point in time, she's, in my opinion, doing the right thing. Now, if she drags this out, um, depending on how long she plans, because I don't really know, I can't, I don't have the the ability to talk to her right now. Does she have a plan for how long she wants to stay out in California? Like, was there is there an ending date? Does she think that she should be out there for another two months, three months, and then, you know, transition back to Indiana? Or is it pretty much no one knows what's going to happen? That's important because she should start, you know, getting herself ready for a transition. She doesn't want to get too comfortable in California get too comfortable in a controlled setting that she's not able to, you know, leave the controlled setting and live a life like everybody else. So definitely let me know what her timeline is and what she plans on doing and when she plans on leaving. Um, because, you know, it's it, when you add a child into the whole thing, you want so badly for her to be there for the kid. But at the same time, you don't want her to rush things because if she relapses and goes right back in that lifestyle, she's not worth anything to that kid. That kid's going to be calling you mom and relying on you as the mother, like like the child is now. But if she sticks it out, learns about herself, works on herself, gets strong enough to come home, she can be her son's mother for good and not worry about you know, being fragile and making a bad choice and putting that child in danger. Okay, so it's a tough situation. I mean, whenever you're a parent and then there's a child involved, I mean, that, that's a really tough scenario. But I, the thing that sticks out to me the most is that she took the initiative to call the places and find her own rehab. That's a big deal. I can't tell you how many times I've talked with people where that is not the, that's not even, that's not how it works. They're out they're having family look, they're not willing to look, they're not willing to, to put in the effort to save themselves. And she did, and she's she's 19. So, I mean, she got caught up in some bad stuff, but it sounds like she may have a good head on her shoulders. It's impossible to tell yet, but um, if she was willing to, to go all the way out to California, which is scary on, on its own for her to go out there by herself, to move in with people she doesn't know, it sounds like she's serious about getting better. Okay, so um, please email me back and let me know about timelines. I'd love to get on the phone with her and talk to her and just see, you know, if she's willing to talk to me because sometimes people aren't. But uh, show her this video. Maybe she'll talk to me. Maybe um, I can see where her head's at and start a, a, a friendly relationship and maybe help her along the way. All right, so great email. Um, I believe I answered all your questions, and yeah. Okay, so great email. Um, like I said before, uh, I would like some before and after photos of some people, uh, before being when you were active use and after being in recovery. Uh, it doesn't matter how long, but uh, it's just cool to see the before and after because many of us have some major transitions. Granted, my picture was taken seven years after, um, but for many people that saw that picture yesterday, they were they were pretty blown away by what I looked like then. I was I was a a big boy and uh, a mess. So um, on top of that, please send in some more stories. Uh, you can email them to ryanacompsupport.com. In the subject line, put YouTube story, my story. Let me know if you want to use your first or last name or stay anonymous. And also the question and answer. I'll probably do the Q&A tomorrow for the video for Friday. But uh, if you have some questions that you want answered, um, just send them in. 
and I'll talk about all of them tomorrow. I have a good amount so far, but I'd like to have, you know, a 15-20 minute video on Q&A that we could revert back to uh, when I talk to other people. All right, so uh, leave some love for her. Uh, I know plenty of people have some experience in this. And Q&A, pictures, all to ryanacomsupport.com. And check out the Instagram page, the Vitamin Support Instagram page, and you can see my, uh, my before and after. All right, have a good one. I'll see you guys tomorrow.